Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to get hands on with the vector data type slash data structure. So this is a great way to get started with dynamic collections. It's one of the most common ones inside of C++ and it's definitely something you're going to want to know. And if you're stuck using arrays and you're like, Psh, I don't need vectors, then just stop. Listen to me guys, you definitely want to use vectors. Now before we get started, please check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. When we want to work with vectors, we need to include vector. That's going to allow us to use vectors. And to create a vector, all we have to do is say standard vector, choose a type such as integer, give it a name, and we could even assign it some values. So we could say one, two, and three. We could also add data to this vector by saying data push back and passing in a value into here. So we'll just pass in the value 12. If we want to output a particular value, all we have to do is say data and then use array-like syntax with the square brackets and pass in an index. So we could pass in an index of three to get the value 12. Now when I compile here, I'm going to use the flag to say this is C++11. That's because vectors are part of C++11, and if you fail to put that on here, we get an error. It's actually a bit discouraging here because the error doesn't really indicate that you need to use C++11, which I guess that makes sense, but if you don't know to use C++11, you might be looking at this trying to debug it for hours. <laughs> so make sure you are using C++11 when you are compiling, and that will allow your code to work. Now when we output, we get the value 12. So it seems to be working. Now, instead of using the index three, you could actually pass in here the length minus one. So to do that, all you have to do is say data dot size minus one, like that, and we can compile and run and we get the same exact thing. So size is a very important method to get how many elements are in the array. Now, another method I wanted to share with you guys was pop back. That'll actually remove the last element in the vector. So we can call pop back here. Now when we call size, it should be one less. So we're going to have one, two, three. And you can see we get the value three. So the size is dynamic. If you expand it and then remove elements, the size shrinks so it doesn't stay at the largest size. It will shrink with the number of elements. So that is pretty awesome because with arrays, you sometimes have to worry about there being some extra space at the end that's not being used. That's not really the case with vectors. We don't have to worry about that when it comes to the front end. On the back end of the memory, we don't have to worry about any of that, so if there's extra memory or anything like that, none of that matters to us. Now there actually is a series of methods that can be used to get more information about the memory that's being used. So here is a Geeks for Geeks article talking about size, max size, capacity, resizing, emptying, shrink to fit, reserve, uh, basically a bunch of different arrays that do very similar things when it comes to working with the memory. But I basically showed you most of what you'll be using. You may also see some of these methods here, such as front, back. This will give you the first element. This will give you the last element. This might be a better option than passing in the size minus one. There's also some modifier methods down here, so we can swap data. We can insert new data using this in place method. 